Hello everyone, uh, my name is Katrina Kalantar and I'm a computational biologist at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. And I'm really excited today to share with you about CZID, which is an open source cloud-based pipeline for metagenomic pathogen detection. So just by way of a little bit of background, um, CZI, CZI's infectious disease work is really focused on accelerating the detection, identification, and tracking of infectious diseases. And the way we do this is by partnering really closely with our sister organization, the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub, and providing training and software tool development to lower the barrier to analysis of metagenomic sequencing data. So this enables researchers around the world to use this technology to better understand the microbial landscape in their region. One of the software tools that comes out of this collaboration is CZID, which is an open source cloud-based metagenomics platform for researchers. It enables simple data upload and cloud-based data processing, so often this type of analysis requires large-scale compute resources as well as experience with bioinformatics. And this tool allows researchers to access metagenomic sequencing results without needing either of those. It also provides data management for samples and projects and generates single sample reports of the microbial abund abundances in each sample. It can then be used to look at multiple sample analysis across a cohort of samples, and there are flexible downloads available for offline analysis. So CZID serves a wide range of different use cases and analysis applications. Since it accepts both RNA and DNA sequencing data from a broad range of sample types and host organisms, it really expands the range of different questions that researchers can tackle using the platform. So shown here are a couple of examples of the types of questions researchers are asking. So we often see folks who are interested in understanding what is the etiologic agent of a particular disease, asking whether there are emerging biological threats, or across a cohort, just understanding the landscape of organisms. And when folks have a particular organism of interest, they may be curious about what, um, whether there's a, a disease outbreak going on there. So recently, the CZID team has been developing an ONT-compatible pipeline for metagenomic analysis within CZID. And so this enables upload of data, automated processing, viewing of results in the web application, and again, download of results for offline analysis. So the underlying pipeline that we've been developing has three main steps. There's the host filtering and QC stage, the assembly-based alignment stage, and then the taxonomic reporting stage. And so diving just a little bit deeper, um, the host filtering in QC stage uses FASTP to do quality filtering, and then does host and human filtering using Minimap2, and then finally subsamples to 100,000 sequences, which are then proceeded into the assembly-based alignment phase. Here we use Metafly to do assembly, and then we align the reads and the non-contig reads to the NCBI, NCBI nucleotide, or NT database using Minimap2, and then align the contigs to the NCBI NR database using Diamond. So this gives us an orthogonal view of the microbial content on both the nucleotide and protein side, which can be really useful for downstream analysis. And finally, we have the taxonomic reporting phase in which the hits to each species are tallied and data is aggregated to understand the total bases associated with each species. So I mentioned briefly that the CZID workflows run automatically in the cloud. And for anyone interested in that underlying architecture, it looks something like this. So raw sequence files or fast queues are uploaded to S3, um, where they're stored uh, securely on S3. And then AWS step functions are used to coordinate the pipeline processes as shown in the previous slide. And then the results of those pipelines are put into a database for web reporting and visualization. This is showing an example of a CZID sample report for an ONT sample. And so shown here are the relative abundances of four different taxons. I should note that this data is a mock-up and not actual real data, but we're showing the metrics that'll be present in this report. And so those include bases per million, total bases, number of contigs and contig bases, as well as percent ID, length, and E value all aggregated as a mean across those hits to the species level. Um, so this is something that we are continuing development on and will continue to iterate um, as we uh, better understand the way that uh, the best way to interpret this data. 
So as we've been developing this, um, we've been doing initial benchmarking with three distinct data sets. And so I'll first go ahead and describe the data sets here, and then I'll move on to talk about the results of each of them in the subsequent slides. Um, we were first interested in understanding whether we could detect a known spiked in organism at varying concentrations. And so what we did here is we spiked in a human coronavirus OC43 into human HeLa cells, and we allowed those to incubate for 24 hours, upon which we did RNA-seq using a grid ion with an R9.4.1 flow cell and base called using gut bv 5 we were then interested in understanding whether we could uh, detect differing relative abundances, and we used the Zymobiomics Zymo reference benchmark. And so this is a previously published data set where there are known organisms at known relative abundances. So this is a DNA-seq data processed on a grid ion using an older flow cell, but rebase called recently with Guppy V6. And then finally, we were interested in understanding how well we could detect organisms in a more complex sample from a non-human host. And so for this aim, we used an orthogonally characterized set of mosquito samples that were previously sequenced using a different technology um, and characterized to understand the underlying virome, virome within those samples. And we asked whether we could detect the same viruses using the ONT-compatible pi pipeline. So again, these were sequenced using RNA-seq, in, on a grid ion with an R9.4.1 flow cell and base called using Guppy V5. So just getting into some of the results here for the uh, coronavirus spike in into the human cell line, what we're showing here is a table of each sample, so sample human 1 through human 6, and the varying MOI or multiplicity of infection, so from 1 down to 0 for no virus. And what we see is that the CZID pipeline is successfully able to detect this beta coronavirus at all the varying MOIs, except the one where there is no virus. Um, and furthermore, we see that even at the lower uh, levels, we're getting a relatively linear relationship between the multiplicity of infection and the percentage of coronavirus spaces. Then looking at the, the known relative abundances, what we're showing here are the 12 organisms that were known to be in that Zymobiomics reference benchmark. And we're showing in dark blue the expected proportions of those organisms, in medium blue the proportions identified by the CZID pipeline, and then in light greenish blue <laughs> um, the previously characterized um, proportions from the publication where this data came from. And so we're, we're seeing that the CZID pipeline is successfully able to detect all of these known organisms in the sample, and that the relative abundances are comparable to the expected and previously published proportions. In our final data set here, the orthogonally characterized mosquito samples, these data come from a paper shown here on single mosquito metatranscriptomics. So individual mosquitoes were processed for sequencing, and then that data was evaluated using the CZID pipeline. So shown here are for the five mosquitoes that we evaluated, the names of the previously characterized viruses, and the fact that the CZID pipeline is able to detect all of these previously characterized viruses in these mosquito samples. So altogether, these results are very encouraging, but of course we have many ongoing and future directions related to this pipeline benchmarking. So we're continuing to benchmark against additional sequence standards and validate on a wider variety of sample types and host organisms. And we're also interested in doing some specific simulations around the ability to, to, to detect divergent viruses. So altogether, the analysis of metagenomic data is complex, but CZID provides one tool for enabling scientists to um, access metagenomic data analysis in a simple and easy to use way. And the new CZID ONT pipeline is su successfully able to identify organisms from a range of sample types. So we're excited that this module will soon be available for early beta usage, and we would encourage anyone who's interested in staying up to date with updates from us um, to scan the QR code or visit the website listed at the bottom. But during the beta period, uh, we have the automated scalable pipeline runs, intermediate files, and single sample reports and downloads available, but we'll be continuing to iterate on the pipeline depending on the benchmarking results that we see. And development will continue to expand the functionality for some of the, some of the web-based capabilities, such as web-based QC, multi-sample analysis, and other downstream applications through 2023. So with that, I want to thank you all for your attention today.
thank the organizers for the opportunity to present here, and then thank my collaborators who have been involved in this project, including the CZI Infectious Disease Team, the Biohub Rapid Response Team, and the ONT Genomic Applications Team, with a specific shout out to Sarah Simmons, who's been deeply involved in the benchmarking efforts, and Lynn Lai, who's been deeply involved in the initial pipeline specification. So with that, thank you all, and I look forward to any questions you might have in the live session.